What is going on out there, folks? My name is Ray, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use yard signs to grow your pressure washing business. So check it out. Money coming, money go. I've been at it. I've been at it on a All right, so first things first. Yard signs and print marketing is a tried and true, great way to build your pressure washing business, regardless of circumstances especially in the circumstance that you don't have a lot of money. Like when I started my pressure washing business, I didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on running advertisements, getting a website at first, and uh, driving traffic to that website through um, ads on different platforms. So what Yard Signs did for me was gave me an option to market and advertise and generate leads immediately. So. Um, you know, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit more than just about yard signs and how to properly use them. We're gonna talk about some of the mistakes that we see people commonly make, regardless of all the information available on YouTube and other social media platforms. I consistently see people make the same mistakes over and over. So we're gonna try to put a dent in that today. And also we're gonna talk about some other methods that work really good for generating leads uh, through the print marketing. So. Let's dive in. Okay, now as you can see here, we've got a bunch of different types of signs here. We've tried, you know, the big service with keywords such as exterior cleaning with the number blown up big with the branding on there, very small to test that out. We've also tried the, you know, just the service house washing as big as possible with the number as big as possible. And then you can also see beside that, we've got the signs that have the branding you know, where the service is a little bit smaller, but it's more of a branding. So we're trying to kind of build that brand awareness. Now, here's the mistakes that we see people make all of the time. It's starting out when you don't have a website, you have no social proof, and you have not really built the business yet. You don't have the um, all the different social media outlets connected. So if you haven't done all of that yet, having a sign that has all this noise on it for the branding side of your business is really not such a good idea. So if you're just starting out, we're gonna go ahead and just cut through all the BS and talk about the best type of sign for just starting out. It's always gonna be the service as big as possible with the number as big as possible. And what this does is it allows people to just be able to see what you offer and how to get a hold of you. So this is the tried and true number one way to generate the most calls. Now, um, if I was gonna put a lot of signs out, this is the type of sign that I'm gonna put out. So if I'm putting it into different uh, intersections and different places out in the city to try to generate calls, I'm always gonna use a sign that has the service as big as possible and the number only because the cold hard reality is that sign is gonna get picked up pretty quick and thrown in the trash. So the other thing I want to mention is when you do put signs out, say in around intersections and in, in high traffic areas, um, put them out on Friday afternoon or Friday evening. And the reason being is because all of the city workers and people that um, would be working during the day that might be enforcing the code, code enforcement, they're gonna find that during the week and, and your chances of getting it picked up are a lot more higher than on the weekend. So uh, go with that. Um, also, for as far as the keyword on what to put here, and I've also tried very uh, various other keywords. House washing was the best one, and behind that was pressure washing. So, and my recommendation, if you're trying to generate a lot of calls, go with either house washing or pressure washing. Um, those were the two best for me. I am down in the Southeast, so maybe if you're up North, go with the power washing as the keyword. But again, make sure you don't make the mistake of using a branded type sign early on. Wait until you get, you know, a bunch of reviews, you got your website optimized and you're running, you know, you're trying to build your brand awareness. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is regardless if you're just starting out or not, um, early on, go ahead and upgrade. As soon as you get a, bu a bunch of these out, go ahead and get some of the branded signs made. And what I like to do is keep the bigger signs for putting out into the you know local area to try to generate calls. And then I like to have the branded sign to in the smaller version to put in customer's yards. Um, 
Uh, we usually put them in every single customer's yard and I would say 99% of our customers have nothing to say, no problem with it. Sometimes they'll let it sit there for a week and they'll ask you, hey, uh, do you wanna come back and get your sign? Oftentimes, I will tell them just to go ahead and dispose of it, thank them, thank them for allowing us to put it out there because uh, the place I'm gonna show you guys to buy signs, you can get these made for so cheap that um, you're not gonna be you know, spending a whole lot of time worried about going back and getting them. Uh, you, you would you know, be fine with allowing the customer to toss them out, it's gonna save you some time. Or you could go back and get them, it's whatever you see fit. So um, that's what I have to say about the yard signs. Now, some other print marketing that works really well is gonna be postcards. You know, you can get a design made up um, and however you wanna have it, there is a link down in the description below where you can actually get a custom design for free. I think usually they charge, you know, however much for that. And uh, if you click the link below, you'll be able to get the design made for free. You just have to kind of provide them what you're looking for. There's other types of print marketing where you can run a special deal and send out mailers, or there's these types of postcards that you can run different ads, roof cleaning ads. You can just run a, a basic postcard that you can hand out with pricing on there. You can give price options and the whole nine yards. Now, I don't wanna to get too far in to the designing and all that because it gets a lot more complex. But um, as far as placement on these signs, you want to always make sure that whenever you're putting a sign out, say you're gonna go and you've got 20 of these signs you're planning on putting out on a Friday evening. Um, you wanna always make sure of one thing, that you're putting your sign in a place where it's gonna have a high visibility and high traffic rate. So you don't wanna, one, one thing I'll see people do is put their signs on a main road where there's no stop sign, there's no stop light, or it may even be a place where there's not a whole lot of traffic that's gonna see it. Another really good tip about placing your yard signs is to get real strategical. And what I mean by that is you can look up your zip codes and look up your median incomes. And if you're not really sure, hey, what area do I wanna put the signs in or what's the best place to put them, look up the median incomes in the zip codes around you and just put the signs at busy intersections in the highest median income. So 60,000 and up. And, and put the signs at the um, intersections around there or at the busy places where people will see them. Another thing is check with your uh, local city ordinances because some of them will allow uh, small businesses to put signs out but they have to be like 10 feet away from the road or there's little rules like that so um, I have probably put out at least three four thousand signs since we've been in business and I have gotten one ticket for a hundred dollars and that ticket was also the only time that I had got um, anybody mad at me so you know a good rule of thumb is just use good etiquette uh, when you're putting the sign in the ground make sure it's in there nice and neat don't have it looking all sloppy um, don't go putting them in front of other people's signs because you're just gonna you're gonna cause some uh, turmoil there with other small businesses in the area you know play play fair um, but yeah always make sure it's in a spot where it's highly visible and it's nice and neat. And be sure to go ride by and check on your signs. If you see one that's all you know, crooked and twisted up, looking bent down and sideways, or the, the stakes are broken, you know, um, stop and, and, and fix it. So um, you know, if people around the city won't, won't feel disrespected and whatnot. Um, you know, other print marketing materials that are tried and true, you know, using a good business card, again, there's gonna be some uh, links down below that, that where you can find pre-made templates of business cards. Uh, also got tri-folds that just kind of talk about what we do and what we're all about, you know? And you can have these different types of print materials made. So you can mail them to property managers. You can hand walk into businesses and ask for the property, uh, the maintenance man and see whoever's managing the property and, and give them something that looks more professional. It's also going to just really set the tone for the sales process and it's going to uh, ultimately raise your close rate. So uh, having these print marketing materials are, in my opinion, 
um, a staple. You know, they're, they're a game changer when it comes to amateur versus professional. So once you cross over to the professional level, um, it's good to get all these. Also back here in the back, you can see we've got a big vinyl sign that we had printed out. It's a little bit too big for me to open right now and show you guys, but um, one of our clients that we do work for uh, offered to, for us to put a sign out at their business in exchange for some work. So, um, you know, do a little bit of wheeling and dealing with your customers like that, and then uh, you can get a great advertisement such as that. So anyway, we're gonna move on to the next thing, and this is another tip. Now, this is just a DIY um, job that I made myself, and you could definitely do an improved version of this, but all I did was get a couple pieces of cheap metal flanges from Home Depot, duct taped them around, and got a hammer stapler and literally duct taped the hammer stapler onto the end of this. And now what this contraption is for is, you know, I don't recommend doing this if you're an established business and you are getting enough work to where you can stay busy. But if you're in survival mode, you know as well as I do, um, it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. So you gotta do what you gotta do in order for your business to succeed, man. And I'm all about that. So anyway, what I would do with this is open up the two flanges that I have taped, and then you can literally just slide the sign down into those flanges and they will hold it for you. Now what you got is a extension. So you can take this and literally raise it up higher up on a pole and then staple it to the pole with your tool here and uh, then you just slide this down and the sign will be stuck up on the pole. And then you can just give it a couple more uh, taps there to hold it up. And that's another great way to make sure other contractors or other people can't reach your signs. And uh, because they will, they will definitely do that. So, right, so this is the part of the video where I'm gonna give you guys some really good information. So I have actually ran marketing reports on all marketing avenues that we currently use. So I know how much money comes back in, what the ROI is, the return on the investment from using the yard signs, all the way from the average ticket per marketing avenue, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we're gonna stick on the yard signs here for this video and we're gonna talk about what type of ROI you can expect. So all that I know is what I've actually done. I'm not gonna talk about anything that I have not personally done or seen because that's just the way I like to keep things. Now, what I have seen with ROI on these yard signs is my goal that in our, our target number was we put out 25 yard signs just like this, either this style or the big service. Remember, we always want that service big and the number big, but after putting out 25 signs on a Friday, and now this is every Friday for the month, we saw an average of $2,800 of revenue for those 25 signs each week, all right? So that gives you a little bit of a number to work with. Yes, is it a little bit of upfront cost? Yes, is it some time and effort? Can you get into some sticky situations with the county or with other, um, pressure washing service providers in the area, yes. So the yard sign hustle is definitely one that can be a little bit of a pain, but it's also one that can make your business survive. And I definitely attribute these yard signs to the survivability of our business because um, these things really, really helped us keep the lights on uh, when we first got started. So I highly recommend utilizing yard signs to help grow your pressure washing business. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If so, hit me with a like and subscribe down below. Also, we have partnered up for this video with UZ Marketing and there's a link in the description below where you can buy these signs. Uh, it's actually the company that I have always used to purchase my yard signs. Um, there's a few different places you can go about getting custom designs. Like I said, they're running a special right now. So you can get a free design with the link below, um, or you can pick one of the pre-made templates, which I also went in hand selected the ones that I would personally use if I was gonna buy one of the uh, non-custom ones. If you wanna use just one of the pre-made templates, go with the ones where you'll see in the link, it'll have the services big with the number big, and then whenever you wanna go to branding your business, switch over to the one that has more 
um, stuff going on where you can put the website, the logo and all that. But like I said, still, I wouldn't put those out when you're putting them out around the city. Only use those for in your neighbor's yard. You know, get the little small sign. I always like the long stakes instead of the short ones, but um, go with the small sign with the long stakes and use those for your customer's yards after you get done with the service and then use the big signs with the service real big and the number real big for everything else. And what you'll find is a lot of money going into your business account and helping your pressure washing business grow to the next level. So anyway, like I said, my name is Ray. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe down below. And as always, keep on hustling, keep on grinding, and shining like a diamond. We'll check you later. Peace. Money coming, money go. I've been at it. I've been at it on the low.